anything from the shop. What are you selling? What Why are you not buying? selling? Hello everyone, welcome to Xbox On. I'm Vex and this is Henry. Today we are here to talk about just a few of the amazing games that released this year in 2023. And we want to hear from you guys as well. We're going to yappa 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 for ages, but Henry, we want to hear from everyone. Don't yeah, we? we're going to be running some community posts on our YouTube page uh, for you guys to vote for your first ever Xbox On Game of the Year. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Make sure you're subbed so that you can check out those posts and have your say. But Bex, I want to hear about a game that maybe has impressed you the most this year. Okay, I'll start. Lies of P. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking loved it. It was, as a Souls fan, um, and especially a From Software fan as well, um, I was really excited by it. I've completed Dark Souls 1, a Dark, I'm working on Dark Souls 2 at the moment, and Dark Souls 3. Um, she just had to mention she played Dark Souls. I mean. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, I just wanted that's to why we're making this it. video, so you can talk about Dark Souls. From playing those games, they are so iconic, and um, the community around, specifically from software games, they're so like well crafted. Um, we had the behemoth Elden Ring come out um, just in recent years as well, and that's kind of um, really hard to follow, especially from a different development team. Mm. But um, the team at Neo was absolutely smashed it. I think. Um, I think it was. To begin with, it was quite an underdog. Like I remember Charlie playing it at Gamescom last year, yeah. um, and also speaking to the developers. I was apprehensive about it because that's when I like I had just completed Dark Souls One, and um, so I was getting more into that world a little bit. It's hard coming up against developers like From Software, who have a proven track record of crafting enormous amounts of lore yeah. and following through with it and just feeding that appetite that their fans have, I suppose, for yeah. for the lore in Souls games, which is sometimes something people don't think of first. Is like, oh, that's actually really important. Like yeah. People think, oh, I play these games because they're really hard and I like to brag about yeah. the, the challenge of how I've completed it and you know, it's really important for me to take down these huge bosses and feel that you know, relief when that's yeah. done. But actually, you talk to really hardcore Souls-like fans and what's actually impressed upon them the most is the lore and that's yeah. one thing Neo is, I think, tackled really well is because everyone I've heard who's speaking about Liza P is mm. saying the story in it was unbelievable. Yeah, boss mm. fights were great, combat was really tight, but it's the story and how that all develops based on your actions. That's what really was long-lasting feeling for them, yeah. I suppose. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, coming from, like, such a, a well-known story like Pinocchio as well. Yeah. Like, Pinocchio... Pinocchio scared me when I was younger, I'm not going to lie. Like, the that movie version, the animated version is scary. Mm. But, um, yeah, coming to it from, like, such an iconic IP and then making a Souls-like game around it um, was super impressive. Um, but you're right, like, there is there's so much good in that game. I must have been, like, six or something hours in, and I'd really struggled. We played it a couple of times on stream, and I'd really struggled with the first boss of the game. Finally got him down, and then a couple of bosses in, I'd started picking up, you know, new arm attachments, which mm. is a really fun mechanic, and um, the weapon crafting, how you can, like, totally refine your build a little more, uh, than you can in other games mm. um, rather than just picking up weapons you pick up a weapon and then you can mix and match it with whatever hilt you want um, so finding my pairing with the weapon and then with um, the arm that I like to use and then from there I was like okay we're done like this game it was so much fun to take down some bosses um, yeah mixing those weapons it's like it's not just a gimmick yeah. That some people might think, oh yeah, sure, I can just like slap an axe head on top of like a, mm. a pole arm here, and yeah, f of course I could do that. But it's like part of the DNA of why this game is like unique, yeah, to the Souls like you know genre, which is hard to like, it's hard to crack that. It's hard to find a, a niche mm. in that because there's been so many other games, and yet they found a way to make that an important mm. part of Lies of P, and one that hopefully they get to develop more on you know, in a future title mm. would be cool or just on other projects that they work on, um, which is crazy to think of that this was like their first crack at like a big game coming yeah. out. Um, you know, it's a, it's it's indie levels of like support behind them yeah. and they've managed to pull off this enormous like win, yeah. I would say, for, for a developer's first ever game, which is yeah. really cool to see. It and, is. Like, inspiring for other, other developers as well, I think. So that's why it's yeah, that's good point. so important to see a game like that come out this year. He's kind of cute himself. No. I have to say. No, nope. yeah. It could be played by like a naughty's heartthrob. Oh, yeah? If there was ever a film made about it. That'd but, be good. Who would yeah. you think he would play? Who, who would play um, him, sorry? 
I can't remember his name, but the guy that's in Gilmore Girls. Um, not the one from Supernatural. The uh, Jesse. His name is not Jesse. Not Jesse. Wait. Tall guy. The tall one. His name's Dean in the yeah, show. Yeah, Dean. That's it. If you know it, drop it in the comments. Sorry. Yeah. Must Dean. We could play him. <laughs> nice. Day one into Game Pass. Which always is, a win. Speaking of surprises this year, right back at the start of January, we had a developer direct. From Xbox and um, some of the sneaky Xbox Sneaky little studios. drop in that one. Oh, little sneaky yeah. surprise drop with Hi-Fi Rush coming from Tango Gameworks, who I know as terrifying Evil Within developers. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to play Evil Within and Evil Within Two. Evil Within Two is like up They're there with one of the brutal. scariest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But harrowing experience going through that. Yeah. Not what they decided to do for Hi-Fi Rush, though. Totally different type of game altogether. Even just as soon as it appeared on screen, it was like, oh, my God. Splash of colors. Like, mm. almost blinding how, like, saturated the game is. But mm. it's, like, nailed that style completely of having those influences from, you know, anime, uh, manga, superhero stuff. It's, like, all the all the cultural, like, memes thrown in as well. And it's it's just a delight. And I didn't know that the depraved minds at Tango <laughs> could make a game like that, but... They did, and everybody absolutely loved it. So we actually got to chat with the developers, or John Johannes, for the game director from Hi-Fi Rush uh, at Sick. Tango, um, during a stream. And similarly to Liza P, it's pretty difficult at times, mm. but only if you're trying to enhance your abilities in the game. So they decided, you know what, we want to make this game kind of difficult. It's a rhythm kind of beat em up which sounds like a weird mashup of genres, but actually you're seeing rhythm games kind of collide into other, ga uh, other game genres more often these days, which is pretty cool. I mean, we've seen it with games like Metal Hellsinger, which mm. is a rhythm shooter, or you see it with uh, kind of like platforming games. But now we get to see one that's a beat em up with an amazing soundtrack, mm. which gets your toe tapping like you can't help whilst playing it, that you're like either bopping your head or like tapping your feet just to like stay in sync. Yeah. And the more you can do that, the better your combat is. And they were like, you know, we want to make there some kind of challenge so that the players who really pay attention to that, who are really skilled at keeping rhythm uh, and coming up with amazing combos in sync, mm. we're going to reward them with even like slicker combat, higher scores on the challenges as well. And they decided, you know what, we're going to keep it that way. Mm. You know, it, it is difficult to try and nail those higher scores and like beat bosses without getting hit because the game's rhythmic challenge is is that in it of itself. It is yeah. a challenge, but if you can't manage to do that. If you're not maybe the most musically inclined person, then uh, that's okay too. You can still complete the game by just being offbeat and sounding <laughs> awful the whole time. And that's, it's good. It, mean, it means the game's way more accessible, but the people that pay attention to its yeah. core mechanics are getting even more out of it, which is great. But yeah, the soundtrack alone, I think, is, is reason enough to even think, yeah, this could make this a game of the year it. shout. You yeah. know? But it's a lot of fun. If you mm. haven't tried it, again, like I said, it's on Game Pass and it's, uh, it's, it's great stuff. It's a good one. Yeah. That stream, was that. Um, it was you and Sam, wasn't it? Me and Sam, yeah. And it was, it was John, John. And did you guys play? So you played High Five Rush, and then you played Metal Hell Singer as yeah. well. That's sick. Yeah, it was, was fun. Was there any like moments with Sam? What did he do again? Um, he was. I think at that moment, Sam realised how difficult it is to play High Five Rush and also speak at the same time yeah. <laughs> because you're so laser focused on the game and trying to nail the rhythm that you yeah. don't have the mental capacity for anything else. Like you, you're never gonna take damage, this game is so easy. And I was like, no, don't worry, like as you die. Yeah, he was struggling to He's say the least. He's not in Warzone anymore. Yeah, but that's, mm -hmm. that just proves that it is difficult if you're trying to be like perfect at this game. Mm. It's, yeah, it's tough, it's a good challenge, try it. But speaking of hard games, one that was highly anticipated that I could talk forever about but oh, yeah. i think i'd like to hear a bit from you at least um <laughs> is star wars jedi survivor because it's always cool to see a sequel to a game that really does level up everything about the original game that you loved yeah. and then add in some extras but yeah what did what did you think about it that holds a special place in my heart because um john boyega actually got one of my <laughs> achievements for me um which was is it a hard one yeah, actually, it was... Um, He's a he, bit of a gamer, then. John Boyega defeated the um, ninth sister. Is oh. it the ninth? Bang, you done me. He did that boss fight for me. Fair play, John. So thanks, John. Well, you didn't need John to get all the achievements in this game, though, at least, because there was one you got that was a little tragic. No. no. Oh, <laughs> Spamo! Bex! 
Report this stream. Report this stream. TOS. Oh, you got a <laughs> secret for it! Poor Spammel. It wasn't my fault. It's kind of your fault. They trusted you. <laughs> The Spammel trusted like, you. I was driving the Spammel. Yeah, but you're in control. Fault. Who designed them with those long legs? <laughs> well, that's just, the just made. that's just how they're made. That's just how they are. Who uses that? They can't that? help that. That's not a good horse. <laughs> well, rest in peace, little Spammel. And I just love Cal Kestis as a character. Yeah. I think he's great. Like, there's a lot of time like I'll relate to like iconic video game characters, but like him especially, I don't know. Mm. Like, I just really, really enjoyed like playing as him and his story and stuff he was just a dude yeah um but he did really well he did his best he did his best he lost um, his master and he was out there alone and sad. he's just trying to be a good boy and then he's gone on this transformative journey with the weight of the world on his shoulders thinking oh i have to carry the jedi into this next era and then you get to see in survivor rugged cow grown up mullet. a bit with a mullet if you Even want better. with a mustache like Heck looking like yeah. 80s action hero and it's it's cool to see him part of a new family that's like grown and all of the character development that goes, you know, what they started in Fallen Order. It feels like the arc that all of them are on is just really interesting. And it's like we say again, this is a bit more of an action RPG mm. verging on souls like mm -hmm. you could say in many aspects. But it's the lore and the story that really carries it. Yeah, the, yeah. the fights are fun, like fighting rank, like Rancors and Ogdos. Like oh some of the some of the fights in this had me pulling my hair out Ogdo, Ogdo. but immensely satisfying to beat yeah. the game beat it on grandmaster get all the achievements of oh. course all the collectibles That's i did it all brag. don't worry don't worry yeah i could brag about souls like games too don't worry about that <laughs> uh really well put together yeah. star wars story yeah which it kind of has to be first because if you make a star wars game you kind of have to respect the ip yeah um to the point where you you put a lot of effort into making sure this has to make sense this has to be like law accurate of course because mm. people will freak out if it's not but making sure that these brand new characters that only exist in Jedi Survivor for the most part mm. um, are, are given the care to, to evolve and grow through a Star Wars story. And it all just feels wonderful. I just, at every moment during it, I thought, this is just perfect. I want to see more and more and more yeah. of this, which is why I spent so much time playing it and making sure I found out all the little secrets and yeah. picked up all the extra bits of collectibles that gave you like more flavor text. And it was just, it was just wonderful. Mm. But damn fighting some of those Ogdos oh were gosh. just painful. I really want a movie. I, I know I love games. Oh, God, I love games yeah. as a media, but I really want a movie with Cameron Monaghan as... Monaghan? Monaghan. Monaghan, sorry. With Cameron Monaghan as um, Cal Kessler. Yes. Unlike his story. 100%. Um, I just want, want a Turgle movie. Okay, I was I'll take a Turgle animated say... series. I'll take a Turgle anything. I'll take a Turgle comic. Do you want to show your tattoo? I would, but it's... Oh. I'd have to remove my trousers. Well. Oh, great. Not on YouTube. So not, yeah, not for this one. Uh, Henry, in, in my notes here, we're coming into like the horror genre oh, yeah. section of Spooky. the video, which I'm most excited about because I love horror games. So starting off with a game that's critically acclaimed, won some awards already and mm -hmm. is iconic to gaming in general. Yeah. Resident Evil 4 remake. Stunning. Very stunning. Really good. Visually movie. stunning. Mm -hmm. But also nice to see that they didn't just want to re-up all the graphics on the original. They also wanted to pay care, uh, pay attention to adding in new features, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. What I loved about Resident Evil 2 was that uh. it was pretty authentic to the original experience, but everything was just plussed up. But with 4, they've decided we kind of want to not necessarily reinvent the wheel, but... Mm. You know, maybe pump the tires again, give them like a fresh lick of paint. So yeah. I haven't played too much of Resident Evil 4 remake yet, mm. but I know you have. So yeah. what's like how's it how's it feel to play that one? Have you played the original as well? So no, I never played okay. the original. Um this was my first time playing it. Like you, I love so good. It's so good. Yeah. I loved um Resi 2 and Leon especially. Mm. Um I, yeah, I love Is he the him. ultimate himbo? No. You don't think so? I Not think quite. Happy. You think he is? No. He's you... pretty himbo-ish. Yeah. In a good way. In it... a good way. Oh, well, there's nothing bad about being a himbo. There's no, there's no bad side of being a himbo. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited to play it coming in and not knowing any of the story really. I'd mm. seen like, you know, iconic screenshots of uh, your man with the big wig. I've forgotten his name now. Um, <laughs> and That's his name. <laughs> big wig, big wig. Yeah. merchant as well obviously mm. 
one of the most iconic yeah. video game characters. So finally meet him was nice. It did scare me a bit, but um, it's creepy. Not as much as everything else. I don't think um, I'd buy something off someone on the street if they came up to me like that. To be honest, but I probably would. If you're trapped in a nondescript European town with loads of weird zombies and chainsaw men running around, then maybe, maybe you might maybe. buy some weird stuff from a guy in a shady trench coat. Why is he doing that? <laughs> He's got a hood. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got a hood. I got it. It doesn't have barriers on it, but what? Well, maybe if he did, then Leon would have bought more. <laughs> maybe. Anything from the shop? It's neither one that goes. What are you selling? What buying are you buying? Or selling. That's it. That one. You yeah, buying him. or selling? Yeah, nice. Also, like, I'm running, bro. Yeah. Why are you not running? Yeah, that's true. Why is he safe? Built different. Wait, Which if... style do you feel like you prefer more? The like the older style, which was over the shoulder mm. kind of vibes. Well, I mean, originally it was like fixed cameras almost, but yeah. now it's over the shoulder. Or do you prefer the like the newer takes from like Village and Seven, where it's <sighs> FPS sort of vibes? <sighs> Hard to pick because they both have their pros and cons. Like yeah. I feel the first person ones yeah. are scarier yeah. normally. But then the third person ones are just, there's more fun to them yeah. in a way, which is kind of a nice tone. Like with horror films, you need a bit of comedy to take the edge off the scares. Mm. With horror games, it helps to have that too. And I think you see that more in like two, three and four than you do in seven and eight. Yeah. But they're both amazing. Not to, again, bring it back to Souls games, but the parry of Billy slapped. That yeah, was, it's a nice touch. It's fine, yeah. You're seeing Leon doing like huge roundhouse kicks. Suits oh! him. Suits him. Yeah. The combat, the roundhouse Combat's good. kicks. Yeah, they yeah. are good. I like that. It's like every game should add roundhouse kicks, grappling hooks, and fun little frog sidekicks. Let's see if it wins game of the year. We were stocked for horror games this year. Oh my gosh, yeah. Speaking of ridiculous audio yeah, in horror games. Yeah, this is a contender, actually. Dead Space Dead remake. Space. I have not played the original, mm -hmm. and I've not really played the remake. So I'll let you... I've done both. You've done both? Mm. Mm. Played both. Yeah, and you actually played with the devs as well. Oh my gosh, yeah. Cool. Always fun. Roman, Roman Campos Oriola. That's right. Um, game director. Yeah. Of Dead Space. Mm -hmm. That was okay. I have some sympathy for Sam <laughs> now that I think about it. Playing mm. Hi Fi Rush in front of the game director because oh my gosh. <laughs> playing not only a game but a horror game yeah. in front of Trying to keep your composure when he's in his head as well. It's, it's a bit sick really, because he <laughs> knows what he like he's done this to you as well. He's yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna put in a little bit of Ah, uh, jump scare here. That's gonna get you nice. And then you're going through it all, and it's like it's about to hit the jump scare bit. It's about to hit the creepy sound bit. It's about to hit the bit with no ammo. Yeah. Just watching it all unfold. He was so cool mm -hmm. on stream as well. It he wasn't was cool. Fair. I was not cool. <laughs> My heart rate was through the roof. I don't blame you. Stream. It is. I mean, from what I watched of that stream, and from what I've seen other people, yeah. Um, when they're playing it online or just reviews, mm -hmm. everyone has been saying like, "Damn." Didn't realise it could be even scarier than the original. Because I think yeah. sometimes we look back at old older games and we have a bit of roast into glasses. Yeah, and yeah. People say Dead Space, the original, oh, is yeah. still just as scary Iconic. today. Mm. They levelled it up though. Oh, 100%. What I like about Dead Space is what you just said that you never really feel... I never felt safe nah. like at one point um, on the ship, but... Um, the way it like unlocks new areas for you to explore like mm. um, throughout the story um, feels really natural as you would like explore it and things like that. Alan! Wake 2, which I think it's very, it's telling of a game. You know it's high quality when the game comes out, you start playing it and you're like, I should stop playing this and actually go back and play mm. the others like because that's how important it yeah. is you think i need to pay like full respect yeah. to this game it's oh. deserving of all of my attention i need you're, to go back and play them you're doing that right now aren't you I'm doing that right now so i'm Sick. gonna i'm going back and playing alan wake remastered i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna play quantum break i'm gonna play control although i've played it all the way through yeah. already and just, so good it's all interlinked now and it's yeah. such a cool like connected universe of games i'm like to really enjoy alan wake 2 i think it's worth my time yeah. playing the old ones so um but from what i have played it's again a game that has just absolutely just killed it on audio and lighting. Mm. Two two of the most important aspects of a horror game, mm -hmm. and it just looks gorgeous. Also, it is uh, this is rare for me to admit because most people that know me 
know that I really like playing games and like smoother frame rates. But Alan Wake Two is mm. the only game I've ever played in like a thirty FPS mode where I'm like, yeah, this is good actually. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with this because the the fidelity of everything around you, like all the forests mm. and the foliage and the lighting and 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 the the effects, they just look so good and it works really well. It and is it's so quite a cinematic still. game, really. I suppose as well, yeah, and it's still smooth. Cinematic. Yeah, it looks good. Like thirty, like like you say, I would agree. Like. Normally, I can't tell the difference. Yeah. But Alan Wake Two like does it so nicely, mm-hmm. um, in quality mode. As yeah. Well as performance, but yeah, yeah quality yeah. mode slaps. It's something I think Remedy's just, just gotten very good at, mm. and I think they are kind of like the gold standard. Is is doing like mixed media games where you have yeah in game you know in engine stuff mixed with. Uh, camera stuff mm-hmm. as well. Like they did it really well in Quantum Break. Mm-hmm. Wasn't quite blended, but they were like, let's do like a TV show along. Alongside yeah. the game, quite cool. Fun concept, Control. Yeah. They started merging them together, so you had sh- parts of it that were shot with a camera. Mm. And Alan Wake Two, they've like fully committed, like we're going to do both. We're going to have some bits that are just camera stuff, mm. some bits that are blending camera stuff into the game engine. Um, it's just really masterfully executed. Yeah. Like they had a vision for it, and I think they just yeah. nailed it. I think it's such a a cool universe. Like you yeah. kind of touched on it, like playing all of those games, like to really soak everything in. Um, it's such a cool like story to it, and also mm. just really unique. Like I'm playing Control for the first time just so now, um, and because I'm playing Alan Wake too at the same time, like in tandem, I pick up on like mm. lines of dialogue that are. Um, are the same but like in different contexts which is really cool we stream over on twitch and we've been super blessed to like get a lot of devs on to speak about their games the ghost runner 2 guys spoke about it like how the challenges about making a sequel and i think you touched on it so well there is like the guys at remedy smash it like throughout this interconnectivity of games Mm. even like the Dead Space Remaster, like that yeah. is such an iconic game. Like, how do you do that justice while also like still um injecting like something new to it? Mm. And I think we've had so many good examples this year of games like that. Yeah. It's really rare to have a sequel come out that is amazing in its own right, but also elevates yeah. the original too and makes you love it and respect it even more. Mm. And Alan Wake's done that with control and it's done it with Alan Wake the original. Yeah. That's like unheard of feat for yeah. a sequel to do to do wonders for its entire universe not so much a, a sequel but i guess a um a, a major add-on mm. as well as like refresh to the game cyberpunk phantom oh. liberty i know about the bomb ticking in your head and i can save your life what's the catch you i've lo- always loved cyberpunk you have i've always loved it, it from when it originally came out but I'm not like, I'm not oblivious that it had some issues and it was also issues, yeah. an, an enormous um, weight upon their team to, oh, yeah. you know, you don't have many developers out there that have the caliber of quality like CD Projekt Red mm. and have released games like The Witcher 3, which everyone just loves. It's released to so much fanfare. And then to also release expansions for a game that everyone's like, oh my God, these are so good. They could yeah. be their own game. And so, yeah, there was a lot of pressure on them for Cyberpunk. It's been in, it was in development for a really long time, and the state of the game now, I think, if this game was to release as is right now, currently with two point one, it would win every award ever, yeah. for anything because it's just unbelievable. But then you add on the fact that it's also the expansion, yeah. Phantom Liberty, brand new like story, spy thriller, blockbuster yeah. kind of action um, set in that amazing locale of night city mm. and just adding upon the systems that like you said with, with the 2.0 update and now the 2.1 update it totally revamped the experience and to the point where i actually restarted cyberpunk i've played it through like three times okay. already and i thought you know what, for, for phantom liberty i'm gonna start over again because everything's kind of different now it's kind of changed they have really elevated and also doubled down on the importance of paying attention to your like your your cyberware mm. I haven't played enough of Phantom Liberty, to be honest, to be able to say how much I love it. But from what I have played, the tone of it is perfect for like a spy thriller that's got, you know, new characters being brought in that you're somewhat dubious of, but you're kind of forced to rely on Mm. and forced to trust because they potentially have an answer that could save your life. 
as well as the fact that you're being asked to save the president is like such an 80s kind of <laughs> yeah, movie so theme. True. It's like, oh, the president's in trouble. You need to save him. It's like, oh, okay, I guess I better do my bit. <laughs> it's great though. The writing's great. Yep. The performances are amazing. So me, Songbird, and also uh, Idris, who plays Solomon Reed. Both absolutely nailed the roles. I love how you just called him Idris, by the way. Idris, my, my man Idris, yeah. It just settles you into this incredible uh, story that you now feel like, it, if you play Cyberpunk now, mm. you genuinely feel like you are impacting the world of Night City. You feel like, yeah, I'm part of this. Mm. It, it's just much more of a connected experience yeah. for a player, which I think is important for an RPG, 100%. And it's something that they're really good at anyway because... They, they've proven that with The Witcher. Heck yeah. So it makes sense that they could prove it with Cyberpunk. Henry, I want to know, though, would you rather live in Night City or, say, like, Los Santos? They're both kind of messed up. I feel like I'd survive longer in Los Santos. Really? Survive, yeah. Not thrive, necessarily. Mm. Night City's just really cool, though. I recently rewatched both the Blade Runner films, and, like, even though it's really kind of depressing... It's also just kind of cool, <laughs> like those dystopian futures where it's all foggy and like you can get some noodles on the side there and like, I don't know, everyone's wearing cool outfits. And it's just chroma It's kind of fun. Everywhere. Yeah, it's just neon and I don't know, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I'd give it a go. Henry, we've spoken loads about like some massive AAA kind of titles, blockbusters yes. that have come this year. Um, we would be remiss to not speak about some indie titles, especially some fantastic this is like ones. The year of the indie. Yeah, from... I, I feel like every year is the year of the indie because uh -huh. <laughs> indie games are so good every year. But this year just felt like it was firing on all cylinders. Like in every genre, at every moment, you could see an indie game just delivering quality. Mm. Um, there are a couple that hit Game Pass in particular that really stood out to me. Yeah. One was Cocoon, mm. an amazing puzzle game. Mm. Just like really inventive. Like the puzzles in it weren't necessarily really difficult. Yeah. And yet, because of how smart the mechanic of being able to like carry the world on your back and pop it down, you can jump back into that mm. world and you can hide other worlds within those worlds that you might need to take it back out with you. It's, mm -hmm. It just makes you think so laterally about so many of the puzzles when you might miss out on actually sometimes the simplest answer is is the the one to go with and yeah. also just visually it was quite gorgeous as well like loads of little like bug people that you're, you're fighting against and something that you don't often see in puzzle games is that it did feature some cool boss battles too mm. um which again you sort of had to think about all right what are the skills that i've learned about or what what's the behavior of the world that i've just found this boss in remembering that and integrating it within the boss battles to, to overcome them. Really, really clever game. And then the other one that really grabbed my attention was Sea of Stars. Oh, yeah. Which, it might sound bad to say, but if this game came out in like the late 90s, um, it would have absolutely decimated games like Chrono Trigger, Final mm. Fantasy. It would have wiped the floor with them yeah. because, yes, it's heavily inspired by the, by that era of JRPG, mm -hmm. having a party system and and using turn-based combat, but also using like timing within fights to try and elevate your attacks. Those are things we've seen before in other games, mm -hmm. but the way that this team um, made it happen, it's just so polished yeah. that I, it's like a faultless game, in my opinion. Oh, um, big talk from gotta be Henry. Well, I mean, it's just it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous experience. I've, I played it on the ROG Ally. Oh, sick. And the screen on that was really great for just seeing how rich the colors were. Mm. And yes, I know so for some people, they don't like seeing 16-bit games or 8-bit games. Mm. They think, oh, they like to see realistic graphics. This is just a treat for the eyes, though. It's just so beautiful. And, yeah. and the, the pixel density of it is great that you still have all the detail there yeah. in the world. And also, it's just kind of fun. Like, it's just a, the script in it is pretty funny. Like, yeah. the characters are pretty lovable. Um, and it's well worth playing, and it's it's yeah, it's a gorgeous game. Great mm. for handhelds, hundred percent. I would say if you have a handheld, this is like a perfect game for it. Yeah. But yeah, Sea of Stars was wicked. I hope it wins a bunch of awards. One I really liked as well that um, came into Game Pass, but it was also um, in game preview for a little bit that mm. I played on PC Game Pass um, was Coral Island. Ah, lovely. Um, these kind of games like Cocoon, Sea of Stars, Coral, Coral Island, we've had um, quite a lot of them. And I think, yeah, they're so valuable to play because um, we play a lot. We play a lot, a lot of, of games. games. Yeah. And sometimes it is so nice to just, rather than escape into a really like full world and have almost a lot of responsibility within a game, mm. um, which is great fun to experience those stories. 
I just want to switch off and grow yeah. some turnips sometimes. Totally. I want to fish. Yeah. Something not so fun, though, is the uh, <laughs> immense trip to hell that we took with Diablo 4, which um, is, a, is a sort of horror-themed game, but I'll be honest, I, as someone who had never really played a Diablo game, mm. didn't have too many expectations for it, but man, Blizzard know how to make a really, really good-looking game. Yeah. Like... I know it's odd maybe sometimes to have the camera way back and you yeah. can see like the whole scenery and like an isometric kind of view, but they packed it so, like so full of detail. And this game is just worth experiencing for the cutscenes alone because mm -hmm. honestly, they are maybe the most high quality cutscenes I've ever seen in yeah. a game. It is just stunning what they can achieve. Mm. The, like the animators there are just on another level. Yeah. I've never seen it so good in any other game. I played a little bit of Diablo 3, um, but yeah, okay. way more of Diablo 4. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and my play style was completely different to what I played in Diablo 3 to Diablo 4. Um, and I really enjoyed mostly playing like with you guys and playing mm. with like Sam and Charlie. Such a good co-op game. Oh, Such so a vibe. good. Um, yeah. I know Charlie plays it a lot, like yeah. couch co-op actually. Ah, um, yeah. And it was, yeah, it's so much fun, like, getting some pals together. And we did some hardcore runs, um, some tragedy yeah. a lot of the time with those bad boys. Not for me. Um, right. All right. Still alive. R.I.P. Ice Cool Killer. Ah. May she rest in hell. In hell, probably. 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 <laughs> and we got a treat of speaking to a lot of the team about that mm -hmm. ahead of time, um, I spoke to Joseph Bodorama, who voices the sorcerer about voice acting, yeah. which is super cool. Um, Charlie spoke to Rod Ferguson at That's Gamescom cool. as well. Charlie gets to speak to a lot of cool people. Yeah, she does. No, a lot of people get the pleasure of speaking to Charlie. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. One thing I, I loved about Diablo as well is like, like we kind of just played how we wanted to mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, you've got this epic story, but then you can kind of choose what play style you want to take part in whether it's like through the character or even the world tiers like like how that oh, yeah. affects like your gameplay or the loot that you get to um i mean it, it's even it's been nominated for like loads of innovation and accessibility awards um through the screen readers and auto cues mm -hmm. um, that can be really helpful for players. You can change um, loads of details like the uh, subtitles, colorblind filters, yeah. um, loads of yeah fine tuning elements that can just make these amazing games more accessible to everyone, which is really important, I think, at the end of the day. I mean, the more people that can play it, the better, because we need all the help we can get against the demon horde so <laughs> I'm down for it heck yeah um, another game that does have that same treatment and respect for for that space is Forza as well Forza yeah. Motorsport came out this year and obviously we can go on and on about the visuals of the game and how much fun it is to you know be back in the motorsport world I love Horizon mm -hmm. this is like a different skill set almost needed because it's a bit more precise it's like it's mm -hmm. less arcade more like not full sim but like simcade at the yeah. same time um, and it's great to see, again, that attention to detail for making sure that the accessibility options allowed mm. everyone to play this game mm. and enjoy it, no matter the skill level or the different um, different uh, accessibility options that they need yeah. to be able to play the games and enjoy them to the full. They were all there. That full suite was there. I mean, at the Virgin Media Gamepad when we were playing Forza Motorsport for the launch celebration, mm. I got to sit down with Sightless Combat, yeah. and he walked me through, like, here are the settings that I use to be able to play this game. Mm. Um, despite being someone who is legally blind. And, mm -hmm. you know, typically you would think that's quite unusual that someone would be able to play a driving game, a racing game, you know. Mm -hmm. And yet the possibilities here, it, it makes them real. It's, yeah. it's, it's so cool to see that. And he was really cool to just walk through, like, these are the sorts of things that allow me to be able to know, like, oh, there's a turn coming up mm -hmm. because I can hear you know, different beeping coming in left or right ears and, yeah. and and having the different assists that you need just to like not necessarily take full control of the car yeah. unless, of course, you need that, but to give him enough control to also make him feel like I'm actually playing this game too. Yeah. Really cool. I mean, but yeah, the graphics in the game are just mind-blowing. Mm. Uh, I think it. I think it is the first Xbox game, like racing game to release that had like full ray tracing on track mm -hmm. whilst you're race, uh, racing as well, which is just... As you're moving at yeah. like 120 miles per it's hour. It's crazy. And like at 60 200. FPS, like that's the mode I usually like to play in is the is the uh, 
ray tracing performance mode. Yes. Ah, it's beautiful. So beautiful. But it's also smooth FPS, which is something I think is really important in a racing game. So you can make those quick decisions and mm -hmm. you can react a bit better. Um, but it's just nice to see all the reflections in the bonnets and when the rain and the fog is just coming down, yeah. like it looks great. There's so much, like you say, care in a, like showing across the full game. Yeah. From the way it looks, from the way it sounds, from the way the cars sound, from um, yeah. the way the cars feel to drive. Um, and yeah, I think you're right. The pinnacle of that is the accessibility features. And um, because, like you say, and like the Sightless Combat showed us, there is so much mm. that you can change to make it um your preferred experience or your needed experience mm. which is um a beautiful thing so yeah. well done to them but it wouldn't be a game of the year video if we didn't talk about starfield henry what's your game? i love starfield so much what, i what's your game of the year <sighs> my game of the year is starfield my game of the year is starfield because i've been waiting for a game like this my whole life stop to be yeah. honest like you're gonna get me emotional well it's it? true it's like th there's always these amazing experiences in games you know bethesda obviously craft brilliant rpgs i love fallout but then i see other games that execute other areas that i love the most as well like exploration games in no or no man's sky for example does great at you know space mm. exploration uh then there are other games that do really well at you know character building and dialogue and rpg choices this is the game that I've been waiting for where they've just combined every aspect of something that I've wanted in a game and just, it's just perfect. It's perfect, perfect game. Perfect. I absolutely love it. We've um, yeah, played many hours of mm. it um, yep. between the whole team, I guess, but um, yeah, us too. And I think, like you say, it was so many years coming. And as a massive Bethesda fan, but not so much as sci-fi Star Wars, Star like galactic astronaut sort of vibe. Mm. That's not really my bag. I'm more like yeah. high fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But coming into that world, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like that was um, by any means like negating my experience of Starfield. Mm. It didn't matter. It was its own world in its own right. It wasn't. I couldn't put it in a box. Mm. Um, it was so beautiful and I think what I loved most about it was like it was such a solitary like nice experience um to explore that story however I wanted as well yeah and then we'd come and talk about it and you'd done something like completely different to me totally different. and I'd be like oh my gosh the world was so full and it is so endlessly exciting to explore as well yeah there are still beautiful. people who are playing through Starfield and experiencing things months after it's come mm. out that I didn't even know were possible in the game. Yeah. Like, you know, going through New Game Plus a certain amount of times mm. and just like, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but no. it is just wonderful how much, like, being in the knowledge that there's probably still Starfield things that haven't been uncovered is somewhat scary, but also just quite reassuring that this, mm. is, this is the game that I've always waited for because it is so... You're right, endless in its mm. in its dis discoverability and the stories that you ha you have the potential to make for yourself. We uh, finished with your game of the year. Started yeah. with mine. Oh yeah. I'm saying it. Let's Liza P. Liza P. That's is yours? my game nice. of the year 2023. Well, don't forget that we need to hear from you guys as well in the community posts about what your Xbox on game of the year is going to be. There's going to be votes throughout the next couple of weeks, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're checking out the community pages every day to look for new polls so that you can decide yeah. which is going to be game of the year and i want to hear as well what game you're most looking forward to next year but yeah that's it from us today don't forget to subscribe and as well hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video bye bye